In this video, I will cover five essential best practices that every data engineer should know when building data pipelines in Marx Fabric. Also, these best practices are very applicable to Azure Data Factory and Synapse Analytics as well. So, if you want to become a better data engineer, stay tuned. Welcome to the video, my name is Alexia and on this channel I cover Marxed Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we are continuing our journey with Marxed Fabric data engineering and today we are going to cover data pipeline best practices that will help you to build better and more production ready data pipelines. This video is also part of my Marxed Fabric data engineering series, a link to the playlist can be found in the description. But now let's open up Fabric and cover some pipeline best practices. Now I have the fabric open and blank pipeline canvas here. We can add just copy activity to this canvas to demonstrate our first best practice. And our first best practice is going to be this retry functionality in these activities. Many activities that do some external actions, meaning that they are not like pipeline logic things like wait activities or filters or add variable activities have these retry functionalities built in. This means that the activity will try to rerun itself before throwing that end error status that it failed entirely. Also one thing to note is this retry interval where you can define the amount of seconds that you want to have there in between those retries. In my opinion it is always a best practice to throw in at least a couple of retries per activity, since there could be for example some network related issues going on that last only for example few seconds, but that few seconds is enough to fail that activity. So this means that your pipeline would become way more robust towards those tiny little network or some random errors that might occur, and then the pipeline would recover from those. The next best practice that I want to cover is this timeout setting in the activities. The default value for this timeout setting is 12 hours. At least with Azure Data Factory I have ran into issues with these activities that they have gotten stuck, which means that they have run until they have reached their timeout limit. In many cases you don't want this timeout to be 12 hours, since in most cases activities could only execute few seconds in most cases, so maybe you want to have their like 5 minute timeout or something like that. But yeah, this is something that you should also consider when building pipelines. But also there are situations where you might want to have more than 12 hours here. But this is a setting that you should pay attention to when building data pipelines. The third best practice that I want to cover is this pipeline level concurrency setting. And what this setting does, this defines the concurrency how many times this given pipeline can be running at the same time. This is a very essential setting to consider and in most cases you want this to be one. Since probably you don't want to end up to a situation where your pipeline is running multiple times in parallel. For example, let's imagine a situation that you have a pipeline that is running every 10 minutes and usually it takes like 2 minutes to complete, but for now some reason it is taking over 10 minutes to complete. If you haven't defined this setting in that scenario, you will end up to a situation that you have two simultaneous pipeline runs for that same pipeline going on, and this could be hugely problematic in many cases. So always consider this concurrency setting, and in most cases you want this to be one, so you don't end up to any messy situation. But there are also situations where you want this to be something else than one. For example, when you have these like general pipelines or multi-purpose pipelines that can be used as sub-pipelines in some other pipelines, then you most likely want this to be something else than one or leave this completely empty. The fourth best practice that I want to cover is that you should utilize iterative logic in your pipelines. So this means that you don't want to have a bunch of copy activities in your pipelines that are basically doing pretty much the same operation and copying data for example from uh, CSV files to some tables. It, then it would be easier to just add one for each activity to your pipeline and then have that copy data activity inside that for each. I've already covered how to use for each activity in my 
Microsoft Fabric Data Engineering series and you can check that video that can be found in the playlist. But using this iterative logic will save you a ton of development time when you have to configure only one copy data activity dynamically rather than for example adding 100 copy data activities if you are copying 100 SQL tables to your lake house or something like that. Before revealing to you our fifth best practice, I would like you to know that I spent a ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Must Fabric Data Engineering content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's go to our fifth best practice. Our fifth best practice is that keep it simple. You don't want to build very complex logic to your pipelines and there are some other tools like notebooks, data flows, stored procedures etc in Fabric that you can use for more complex logic. So you want to keep your pipeline logic as minimal as possible and then just add those more code and complex logical blocks to your pipeline to be run as part of your pipeline. But try to avoid building a lot of like complex logic to the pipeline itself because the pipeline is really not meant for that and this kind of low code tools have their limitations when you try to build like for example uh, multiple for each loops on top of each other. That's not what this pipeline is meant for. And that should be preferably done, for example, in a notebook. But yeah, now you should have an understanding how to build better data pipelines in Microsoft Fabric. If you'd like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.